Okay guys, Keith here. Um, okay, so this is my second video on 2017.20 and in this video I wanted to spend most of my time going through the new, new AC mode. Now, I'm actually using a version that's a little bit beyond 20. Uh, there's some changes that I've had to make to fix some bugs. Um, and uh, I, I try, wanted to try and make the video somewhat current and relevant uh, beyond just today. Uh, and so uh, I've sort of put some fixes in. So if you're using uh, .20, there may be some things in here that don't quite work uh, as you expect. Um, and where I fix them, I'll try and mention them so that you don't have to waste time raising uh, bug reports to help us get it uh, sorted. Um, so when you first launch it, uh, you won't actually see an AC mode. Um, uh, if you want to see the AC toolbar, you have to come up to the view menu to the AC lights toolbar. Now there is another thing called show AC ramps. That is definitely not in version 20. That's coming in 21. And if you click on it, you get this toolbar. You can actually drag the toolbar around. Uh, if you've got the room, you can put it at the top. You can put it alongside your effects. You can even drag it down the side and have it vertically appear um, up to you. Um, now I've also created some models here. I've got three single channel stars. They're different colors. This one's red, green, and blue. Uh, I've also defined 16 channels here. Um, I used the candy cane model as I showed in my teaser video. Um, I've just defined a candy cane model with 16 canes with only one light per cane. Um, and that gives me a, a block of 16 channels that I can sequence onto. Of course, it doesn't have to be a candy cane. I can map that to any set of AC lights, but for the moment, I find that's the easiest way to allocate a block of channels. Um, now, the other thing you can do is you can, um, or sorry, the other thing that we're looking, I'm looking at working on is whether I can come up with a new model that actually does blocks of channels a lot better. I also have a standard RGB here because I want you to see what that looks like. Um, and I happen to have taken these three stars and I've mapped them to the same as the first three channels in this block of channels. Um, so, uh, so basically when I light this pixel up, the whole star here will also light up. So they're an overwrapping model. And if I was to run my good old uh, check sequence here, it would give me the warnings to say, what do you know? Uh, my arches, which shouldn't be, I'll fix that. Um, but yes, my, uh, my stars and my 16 channels overlap. Um, let's fix the arches though. I actually don't want that to overlap. So we'll throw that somewhere nice and high and it doesn't overlap anymore. All right, so all good. So let's go and create a sequence. Uh, we'll create an animation um, and up it comes. Now uh, we've got the colors here showing what color we've set those models to. Now the 16 channel controller thinks that it's red. That's what I've set it to. Obviously um, uh, strand one, which is actually blue up here and you can tell that because if I drop an on effect on here, um, and I drill down into the node data here. Oops, what happened? I didn't click on it, I don't know. So, yeah, okay, there it, it appeared. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, I put red on strand one. Um, so if I go to green, which must be strand two, you can see here it shows up as red, but here it shows up as green. Um, and that's because uh, we now actually inherit the color that we show here from the color of the model definition itself. And so when I allocate this block of 16 channels model, I wanna actually make it such you can go through and specify the color of each one, but we'll get to that. And the reason that this one effect worked uh, happily across all of them is because I, I have them up here. I'm actually sequencing it on white. If I was to make it a red, when you put a red on top of a green, you end up with black because it's not actually um, uh, the same color. Um, and that's actually what would happen in real life if you were sequencing this way. And so we would normally sequence everything in white in AC mode, but we'll nicely show it to you in the right color here. So I hope that makes some sense. Okay, so you've always been able to uh, come in here and uh, put effects down. Let's quickly create a timing track in here. Um, I'm gonna create a new, I'm gonna create a half second timing track. So we'll go to the metronome timing track. Uh, we'll put 500 milliseconds in and we're done. Now we have a timing track, which is at 500 milliseconds. And so it's always been possible for me to come into here 
and uh, I press the D key and I get a ramp down and I come over here, I press the U key, I get a ramp up or I, you know, I select a bunch here and I press the O and I get an on. And you've always been able to sequence your AC lights this way. Um, the problem is, is it, it doesn't feel very efficient. It's, you know, it, it's, it's hard to go along. Uh, copy and paste is not easy. Uh, the selection mode is a little bit weird. Um, can I select that? I can, but yeah, now it's now it's locked up, and I've got to click the mouse again. So you end up spending a lot of time clicking and a lot of time dragging, etc. Um, and it's quite a painful process. So we want to address that. So uh, what we have is this AC mode. Now AC mode is one of those things that you enable and disable. Uh, when you click the AC button, it turns green. A lot of the other parts of X lights get disabled because none of that stuff now is relevant or works. And you're really not just now living with this toolbar. Uh, you can still do things like play it and the like. And now when you come down to here, you'll see the selection modes change slightly. If I hold the shift key down, I can easily select areas. Um, I can move the mouse around really easily. Um, I can also use the mouse. I can also click and drag, etc. Now, if I run through the toolbar up here, this, this is very similar in concept, not quite the same in layout and everything as, as LOR, but very similar. We have a select mode, which lets you quite safely click and drag and select um, and so forth. Uh, notice you can't see the, the selection edges, you can't expand effects using the old, you know, I click on the edge and drag it out. None of that works when you're in AC mode. Uh, you're just manipulating the data within these cells and you can't actually manipulate the data at less than a cell level. So you need a timing track that is at least as fine grained as the, the amount of editing you want to do. Uh, the red is, is an off. Um, if you click and drag and highlight an area, the off turns it off. Uh, there is an undo, you can press Control Z, it will come back, so it's all good. Um, but yep, any to anywhere you press, um, it will just delete stuff. Now you can also, using the keyboard, um, if you go back into select mode, uh, if I come along and I highlight an area and I press the delete key, same thing, it, it turns it off. So the on effect, not surprisingly, um, does exactly what you'd expect it to do. Um, it turns stuff on at 100%. Um, although it doesn't have to be 100%, you can come over here and say, I want it at 33%. You can highlight multiple rows at a time. Uh, you can overlap rows, it doesn't matter. It, by default, it's in paint over mode and wherever you paint, it's gonna be painting in effects. Um, and you can change uh, this up here to whatever level you want it to be. Um, you can also select a ramp. So if you click on a ramp, now you get a range here, which by default is zero to 100. You highlight an area and it puts a ramp in from zero to 100. If you didn't want that, you only wanted it to go to 50%, we can do that as well. So again, hopefully relatively easy to change. Um, if you're gonna have a ramp up, you need a ramp down and then sometimes you want to do a ramp up and an immediate ramp down and that's done with a ramp up ramp down and so forth so so all very easy um, that's the on effect um, if you're in select mode and you're using the keyboard um, it, it's really quite simple i think n is oh uh, that's a bug I think that was meant to turn it on. I have to fix that. So A does that ramp up, ramp down. I think there's a bug in the code that caused that to happen. Um, a U does a ramp up, a D does a ramp down. And like I said, an N is meant to turn it on, but for some reason it doesn't. I have to fix that one. Um, Okay, I think that's that's all the keyboard commands for the on. Oh, sorry, I know what it is. Uh, if you want to turn it on, um, I actually, if you press I, I think it sets it to the intensity. Um, but I will make it so that O also turns it on, if I remember. Um, okay, uh, then there's the shimmer. Um, the shimmer does pretty much what you would expect it to do. Um, it basically drops an on effect with a shimmer. 
and, and so it over that course of it, that time it, it shimmers um, and again you can use all of these ramps ups down set the intensities all works exactly the same um, and then there's a twinkle now twinkle works the same but it looks a little bit different it still shows up like an x lights effect and that's because we don't have a background render for a shimmer although uh, coming in 21 um, uh, I've added a, a new mode so you won't be able to see this but there's now a show AC range and this shows uh, the ramps um, and the like and it's hard to see but there's actually ramps that sit behind uh, that as well. So uh, the shimmer shows as sort of blocks and there's uh, it's actually outlines that appears there. But anyway, that's coming. Um, okay, so that's the on, the shimmer, um, the twinkle. You can combine them any way you like. Um, the keys up here are actually listed against each one. So if you forget what they are, that's relatively easy to find. Um, now, if I come back and delete all of this. Delete. Oh, actually, before I do that, um, even though these things are X lights effects, you can still do things like highlight the middle of it and click delete. Um, also where you've got a, a ramp like this, if you click delete in the middle, it doesn't break the ramp. The ramp's still exactly what it was. It's just now discontinuous. Um, and when you get out of AC mode, curiously you'll find that these are actually all bog standard uh, effects that you would find in X lights. You can click on them, you can play with the properties, you can set whatever you want to set on them. To be honest, it probably doesn't make sense to, but you can. They are just standard effects. Okay, so let's talk about some other things. Um, so the fill command, the fill command lets you come over here, highlight an area such as the gap that we just created there. And if I press F, I think for fill, it will fill the gap in using a smooth curve. Now you can highlight as much of an area as you like. If I highlight this area here, press F, it'll fill in any gaps using information about what surrounds it um, and also what effect I've chosen up here. So because I had the on effect chosen, it filled it with the on. If I control Z that, if I click on shimmer and I click the fill effect again, um, if I press F, it'll fill it with a shimmer. If I was to click on the twinkle, do I click on the twinkle? And I press, uh, sorry, I press F again. Oh, sorry, I've got to delete it first. Um, it'll fill it with the twinkle. Um, so the fill just basically joins up your gaps with whatever smooth transition of that is. Now, if this thing had been, uh, it'll also match the brightness. So um, for instance, if I was to highlight this area here, um, sorry, let's do it with the on effect. Uh, so if I was to highlight this area here with the fill effect chosen, it would help if I delete that. Um, sorry, now I'll do it with the fill effect neon chosen and it will create a ramp up because it was black over here and it was on here. And so I just put a ramp in to take that up to the right brightness level. So that's the fill. Um, uh, we'll get out of fill mode. We'll go back and we'll delete everything again or most of it. And uh, let's let's do some cascades. So cascades are interesting. So if we come down here and we we put I don't know a ramp up in, and let's say I wanted a chase of these uh, spread over these channels, um, I could just highlight this area here. Um, and then if I click the H key, it will generate me a cascade that covers that time period. Um, the cascade is sensitive to where you start and everything. So if I was to start here and go left and down and press the H key, um, okay, I know why that happened. Um, sorry, we'll do it a little bit shorter. H key, no, must be another, there's another effect in there. Um, the way the cascade works is if there's another effect in there, it will just do a copy down. So let's delete, whoops, delete, sorry, let's delete everything. 
Let's go there and put a ramp up and let's go down to the right. Ah, that's also a bug. That should not be happening like that. Um, it should be um, obviously doing a reverse cascade. I have to look at that one as well. I think that happened because I tried to fix another bug. Um, so we tried it to the right. Um, look, it'll also work going up except it doesn't work because of that bug. I'm guessing it might work this way. No, it doesn't. So at the moment, the cascade just works down and to the right. Uh, you don't have to select the whole effect. Whatever you highlight, it will recognize and it will let it go down. So yeah, uh, that's the cascade. Um, and then the next thing you have is you have the foreground and background mode. So in foreground mode, if I go up here and select a ramp, and if I was to start here and ramp across this whole area, it will build, it'll write the ramp, but only where there was an existing effect. And so it's, uh, it's just filling in where there was already an effect and putting the ramp over the top of it. And it produces a bit of a discontinuous ramp. And if I was to select background, the difference with background is background will only draw where there isn't an effect. And so it fills in the area around the existing effects. And in this case, it's put a ramp over the, the top of it. So a, a couple of, of ways in, um, in which you could do things. Um, you click on them again to turn them off and go back into normal mode. So I, I think that's the bulk of it. Um, everything is actually doable from the keyboard. Um, there, there is nothing, if there is full undo. I, I can now just start pressing Control Z and it will undo everything that we've done. Um, so there's full undo involved in it. Um, and when you go out of it, it goes straight back to regular old mode and you can do your AC lights and so forth. Um, now, we're, sorry, your RGB lights. Uh, you can do this on, um, on RGB um, and here obviously it looks like a white because that doesn't have a color and because I've selected white, uh, it always paints white on, it will look like white. Um, and in fact, if you turn this back off and you click on this effect and you start moving it between, you can see as you move from a model which is red to a model which, sorry, a model that's multicolored, it changes automatically to represent the model. Um, so this green one here, I go up to blue, red, and so forth. Uh, and you'll find this will also happen with other more complex models like morphs and the like, which do these rendered backgrounds. All of those things will now be sensitive to any single color models and make sure that they represent the actual uh, appearance that those models will have as a result of it. So already got a couple of things there that I need to work on. Um, hopefully have a play with it. Uh, if you strike any anomalies, yeah, let us know about it um, and we'll try and um, try and get them fixed. And hopefully in a release or two, we'll have a, a, an AC sequencing mode that uh, is sufficiently easy to use that uh, people are comfortable actually uh, bringing their sequences in and, and potentially editing and keeping them in X lights going forward. Cheers, guys. Thank you.